everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys what I read in 2016. So these are in no particular order, but I stopped reading for so long and I finally decided in 2016 that I was going to read and so I read quite a few books that I'm excited to share with you. So one of the books that I read this year was 800 Grapes by Laura Dave. And I really liked this book actually. I finished it in one day, like I just got through it. And it, that's kind of a big deal when you're in college and you have like no time. So I sat for this day and just watched and just read this entire book. I actually really liked it. And so the general summary of it is there's this girl and she has basically disconnected herself from her family and she's planning on getting married to this guy and basically starts with her just running away in her like wedding gown after her wedding fitting and just like heading home basically and she's basically had the spat with her boyfriend that I'm not going to get into and basically she's really upset and this is basically like her way of coping with not only the changes in her life but also the changes in her family over the years where she's kind of been away and how even though you're an adult when you go home you still expect it to be kind of like being a kid you know you expect your parents to be the same and your bedroom to be the same and you know everything to be like how it was when you were a kid and this girl that's just not the case for her so there are a few things that have changed in her household between her siblings, between her parents, between the family business and all of that and it's her way, the story follows her way of coping with all of that and also follows her train of thought in deciding whether or not to stay with her fiance slash boyfriend. And the thing I really liked about this book is it's like such a leisure read. You don't, you're not really stressed out while reading it. You don't really get into any thick plot lines. It's all very high level. Um, the writing is you know, pretty good, I think. I like really enjoyed it. it. You know it's strong writing when it's not really in your way. Like when you're reading, you notice some nice lines, but it's never like, what is she trying to say or something like that. It's very, you know, it's very leisurely. You can read it really calmly. So I read that all day long <laughs> that day. I like was wearing my robe and then I like changed positions and read it by the window and I just like didn't put it down. And I finished it. And I let, dropped it and I was like, you know, that's a really nice book and I can totally see it being turned into a movie, you know, a really, like a really good chick flick, I guess, because it follows most of the plot lines that a normal chick flick would follow. So if you're looking for like a really chill read that you'll enjoy, but you won't really leave with any amazing feelings from, I mean, I thought it was a good book and I would definitely read it when I'm like on a stressful day or something where I just kind of want to check out but yeah I mean I, I give it like three stars maybe four I thought it was pretty good so the next book that I read was is called Yellow Eyes of Crocodiles by Katherine Pankle I really liked this book like I hadn't read in so long like since I was maybe 14 I hadn't read and then this year I like decided to read so it took me a really long time to like find a book that I enjoyed and that I would really get into so this is the first book of this year that I really got into I'd read maybe two or three before it but this is the book that I was like you know what I'm gonna continue I really enjoyed this and I finished it and I really liked it it was about this woman who has two grown daughters and her husband is basically not contributing to the family in any shape or form and so she leaves him and basically starts writing this book for her sister. She basically ghostwrites a book for her sister. And in that process of ghostwriting, she learns more about herself and becomes more confident. And basically, that is the story. It shows how that one story and that project of hers to write this book like, allows her to accomplish a lot of other things in her life and gain a lot more courage to take over certain parts of her life, which I found really just really nice and you know I read some reviews for this book about you know how the writing was not that great or that you know the characters were a little annoying I didn't think so you know I, I thought the writing was generally pretty strong and I thought you know the main character though yes she is a little whiny and a little she's just not confident you know and I think there are people like that in this world so you know just because those people are slightly annoying doesn't mean that the writing is bad or that the story is bad I really, I really like this book. I highly suggest reading it. In fact, I went to the bookstore just the other day and I saw that there's a sequel to this book. So I'm really excited to read that because I did really like how the story was structured, you know? 
I liked the various changes in perspective. I liked how she wound together all the different characters and how they all end up meeting at some one point being relevant. You know, I hate it when books talk about certain characters and there's like completely different plot lines. Like, I really don't like that. So I'm really glad that she did that. Overall, I thought this was great and it's very creative. You know, the things that her husband gets up to and that she get up to don't usually happen. So I'm pretty glad that I thought this was a really nice book. I really enjoyed it. I gave it like four stars. It was the first four stars of this year. Like, I really liked it. So if I didn't already say, I really liked this book. I thought it was great. Um, this next book, The Driver's Clothes Lie, The Diver's Clothes Lie Empty, was the first disappointment of this year. I really didn't like it. I thought the writer was just trying really hard to be creative and over the top and I just didn't like it honestly I just felt like it was trying too hard and basically the story is about this woman who has had some definite pain in her life and has decided to go on vacation to kind of leave those woes and she comes to this place of Casablanca, Morocco and basically gets robbed like her passport, her entire identity is stolen from her anything representing her identity is stolen from her and it's her quest to kind of in a sense get it back but in the process she ends up stealing someone else's identity and becomes that person like she actually becomes that person and I just didn't like it honestly it was definitely written in a unique way like it's written completely like I'm not sure what the word is but it feels more like dictating so like it's as if I am that person and the narrator is telling me what I'm doing it's so, like you say you do this as if I'm the main character and I just I didn't like that I felt like it was telling me what to do and just the entire time I was like ah uh, I'm not really a big fan so I gave this two stars on Goodreads of course you guys can follow me on Goodreads um, I'll leave the link below but yeah I just was not a fan honestly yeah, not a fan. Another book that I read this year was The Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend. And I'm sorry I'm looking at the book like this, but it's been a while since I read these books. So I have to like refresh my memory on it. Like, you know, I just have to refresh my memory, okay? So it's by this woman named Katerina Bivald. Bivald? Bivald? I'm sorry if I mispronounce your names, by the way. I, I'm trying. Anyway. You know, this book, I got through it, of course. Like, I always finish the books that I recommend to you guys or that I review, of course. Overall, I thought this book was average. I thought her writing was pretty good, but I thought the story itself was kind of dry. Um, I picked it up because it was on the front of every bookstore that I got into, and it was, you know, rated pr pretty well, and people said it was a good book to kind of disappear into. I actually struggled to do that. I thought the story was just so like uh, not engaging really. It's about this girl who escapes into books to avoid lots of reality in her life. The girl, you just don't get enough about her past, you don't get enough about her character to really engage with her in my opinion. And I just, I found her a little dry, honestly. And she goes to this tiny town called Broken Wheel in the US and Basically, she goes there to meet one of her pen pals that she has been corresponding with for a really, really long time, only to find out that this person is dead. Um, and generally, it's about her basically finding a place in that town that she went to originally visit her friend, but now her friend's no longer there, so trying to find some purpose to her visit. And overall, you know, you meet a lot of very quirky characters, some of which you know you really like and you really empathize with but I felt like she spent so much time building up this story and the wrap-up was just so abrupt and it was very de deus ex machina and that like it doesn't really make sense and that wouldn't normally happen you know so I it wasn't very believable so I gave it I think I gave it a three or something around that range because you know it wasn't bad I would definitely never read it again but you know I read it once and that was good, you know, going to a town in Iowa that's like basically dead 
it's nice. I mean, I guess, but like choosing to stay there seems weird. Like even for three months to stay there for the entire trip seems weird. But yeah, anyway, I thought this was an okay book. The next book was Where'd You Go Bernadette? And I read this very early on in the year, like really early on. And honestly, like this was probably, this was I think the first book that I read after not reading for a really long time. And honestly, I found it really hard to get through. And I don't know if that's because I hadn't read in so long that my focus just wasn't there and I wasn't able to engage fully. Do you know what I mean? Like where if you haven't read for a really long time, you're kind of like, oh my god get to the point because <laughs> you know you're so used to like the immediate gratification of like a tv show or like you know reading watching youtube video where you're like you know what this is gonna get done in like half an hour or 10 minutes whereas this book took a lot longer than that to finish anyway you know now over the year now that i've thought back about this book and how i feel about this book and the writing and all of that i think it is generally pretty strong you know i think the the way she presented the story was really good and like the email excerpts and the characters I thought they were all well done definitely the story I didn't like the the mom very much I mean Bernadette herself didn't fully engage me I feel like if I read this book again I might have a different opinion in that she does seem to be an interesting character and the reviews seem to be so high for this book that I just can't believe I didn't like it do you know what I mean like where you're kind of like did I just miss something? I did like it. I thought it was all right, you know, but yeah, like I was just kind of like, I don't know, it was okay. Maybe it was just that I tried to start it with an audiobook. Like I tried to read this book initially with an audiobook, like just alone, like just listening to an audiobook while I was doing my laundry or whatever, cause I was in school and like, I didn't have a ton of time to actually sit down and read the book. But while I was doing that, I felt like I zoned out quite a lot. So I was never really fully engaged with the story. And I definitely think that was partially the problem. So I've slowly moved away from audiobooks. But this was definitely one of those books that I think I'm going to give another shot to. Maybe later on <laughs> when, I've, when I'm done reading the other books that I've lined up. So yeah. Now on to one of my favorite books of 2016. Definitely one of my favorites. I really enjoyed this book, The Girl with All the Gifts. This was probably, I think, the fifth or sixth book I read this year. It was exquisite, honestly. From the first page to the last page, I found myself enjoying it. I read it with a highlighter. I know I'm that noob who like highlighted lines that I loved, but I loved the analogy of Pandora's box that just ran through the entire book. I'm not gonna tell you too much about the story because a lot of it unfolds as you read it, but the writing is so strong, so engrossing, so beautifully done. The world is really well described and like you really feel compassion for a lot of the characters. I really wanted them to go a little deeper into some of the external third party char characters because they played such a big role in the story, but you never really got to understand them as well as you did the main character. I know that's the case with a lot of stories, but honest to god, I would have loved to get to know uh, like Miss Justin a little better or Sergeant Parks a little better just to understand where they're coming from. I mean, we got a little bit of it, which I was so grateful for, but not enough in order for me to truly like be like, you know what, this is a fabulous, fabulously done book. Overall, there were so many lines in the story that like I just could not read without a highlighter. I had to highlight them just because I just absolutely love them. I think I might do a separate video where I share those lines with you because there is definitely a spoiler alert there because you obviously need to know the context in order to truly appreciate those lines. But oh my god, loved this book. Definitely five stars. It was so good. I mean, let me just read the back to you because I think that shows generally the vibe that it was going with. Every morning, Melanie waits in her cell to be collected for class. When she comes for her, when, when they come for her, Sergeant Parks keeps his gun pointing at her while two of his men strap her into a wheelchair. She thinks they don't like her. She jokes that they won't bite, but they don't laugh. I really, really like this book. You know, it's not as dark as it sounds. I mean, yes, it is kind of dark, but not dark to the point where you'd be crying or where you'd feel unsafe or scared. It's not a horror story. It's, it's very, it's very like, post-apocalyptic, I would like to say, post-apocalyptic post fiction. 
definitely liked it. Highly, highly recommend you guys should read this book. For sure. Definitely a lot better than some of the other books I've read this year. Now, of course, obviously other people might have other opinions about these books. They're all good. They're all highly rated. You know, otherwise I wouldn't have, like, picked them up at the bookstore. But in my personal opinion, I didn't like some of those books. So I'd love to hear your guys' opinion about them. And you know what? I'll give them another shot at some point. And you know, my opinion may change. But that book for sure was really, really good. Another book that I read this year was called All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Now, this book and I have a story. Like, I heard about this story well back, maybe in early Jan in like January last year, January 2016, and I just I don't like jumping on the bandwagon when like a big youtuber or like someone else who like has a big following talks about a book because honestly you know ya fiction doesn't fully engross me as much as other genres do but after looking into it a lot having it in my amazon to be like amazon wish list for a while i was looking through the comments and looking through the reviews and i was like you know this book actually sounds really good and it sounds like it's really well written maybe i'll give it a shot so I bought it and oh my god, I read it with the highlighter. I was so engrossed. There were lines that I absolutely loved. I just actually physically fell in love with the main character Finch. Like I want just found him so so charismatic, so beautifully written, so engaging. Um I absolutely loved him. I cried so hard at the end. Like there's a story so I was reading this book like there was no tomorrow and I woke up in the morning so excited to finish it I had literally 50 pages left I woke up in the morning got up made my coffee sat down and read this book within five minutes I was just completely sobbing I like called my boyfriend I was crying I was like oh my god the story just got me so badly and it was just I had never cried like that over a book I mean I was so connected to these characters that like I was just so personally affected by the story and I don't know if that's your cup of tea but I it was so cathartic it was just this is just a beautiful book absolutely beautiful I mean it tortures you I mean you you fall in love with these characters so their pain and their experiences are so engaging that they affect you so much like personally and definitely worth reading definitely worth reading five stars five full stars absolutely absolutely love this book so beautiful now i read a few more books on either audiobook or ebook this year that i want to talk to you guys about a little bit of course i read the amy poehler book yes please that was another book that i listened to solely on audiobook now i think my experience with audiobook is kind of unique in that it really depends on the book that i'm listening to so for example I also read the two Harry Potter books, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and Harry Potter and the Sorcerer and the Half-Blood Prince. I read both of those books via audiobook and also reading alongside. So I listened to the audiobook and I was reading the book. I found that really nice because I read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince back like 10 years ago. And I love Harry Potter, but I hadn't actually read the books again in so long. So I started reading those books and I found the audiobook really helpful because it kept me engaged and it allowed me to catch on, on things that I may have skimmed over. So I really liked that. And those two books, of course, are five stars. I love those books. So those are other books that I read this year. Of course, I mean, everybody says Harry Potter is fabulous, but it really is. It's so fabulous. And on the other hand, Amy Poehler, I didn't read that with the book. I just listened to it. So I found like a lot of the time I would not really know what she was talking about and I think that may have been because I am not in the theater scene. So I really didn't know what she was talking about a lot of the time like when she says she's part of an improv troupe called like a fet like a it's apparently a well-known improv troupe but I didn't know anything about it. So when I heard her first mention it I was like I don't really know what you're saying and so I found myself kind of waiting for the book to be over. Um, I don't mean that to be mean, really. I thought it was like, I'm sure she, like there are a lot of people out there who really loved the book, but I didn't really. I listened to it over audiobook and then, you know, it was really like a two stars experience. I found some of the commentary not very funny. I didn't find her very funny. I love a lot of Amy Poehler's work. I love Parks and Rec. I love Mean Girls. I love all of it. Did she work on Mean Girls? Let me look that up. I don't know. Anyway. I love Amy Poehler. I think she's fabulous. I just didn't really love her book. 
And I think those are all the books I read this year. Ta-da! Um, I loved a lot of these books. As you can tell, some of them got raving reviews, others a little bit of mediocre reviews. But all I can say is I have truly started reading again and I'm so grateful for that. I was such a bookworm when I was little and I'm so glad, I'm so glad I'm back into it because there's so many books out there that I never really even thought about reading. And now that's all I can think about is when I go to the bookstore, I'm like, oh my God, new books. So I'm so excited to start these new videos for you guys. And I really hope that some of these reviews helped you guys. Leave any suggestions that you have in the down bar for me to go maybe check. Um, not down bar, comment section. I'd love for you guys to comment some of the books that you've been enjoying so that I can maybe give them a read and let you guys know what I think. Um, and yeah. I look forward to making more videos for you guys. I'll see you guys very, very soon. And follow me on Twitter, subscribe, like, comment, all of the above. And I'll see you guys soon.